I'm Arthur Perkins, and the nice part about this show is that I don't have to ask the cast members if they have lewd shit they want to get out of the way before the show starts. I do, however, need to announce that there will not be Battletech Bingo this week. It will probably be next week. Uh, we're using the old overlays because the old overlays have four player faces instead of five. And don't worry, I'll get these tags updated. That's how long it's been since we've been on this overlay. Uh, all of the mech designators are all wrong. Battletech Bingo will be back on a week where we actually are in our mechs because the Battletech Bingo is predicated on us being in our mechs. And this will not be a mech session. Unfortunately for you, people who wanted it to be a mech session. I mean, I would rather not get horribly murdered by evil assassins with very sharp swords, but that's just me. Uh, I mean, you should reconsider your actions in the future then. Everything in your life has led you like an arrow to this point. Hmm. Tell me about it. <laughs> I don't uh, know. I'm starting to feel like I'm but uh, suffer but the whims of uh, an evil mastermind overseeing everything. Uh huh. I want to go ahead and thank all the people who are posting nice comments this week instead of nasty, horrible comments. It's nice when people don't feel like they're trying to kill my brain. Special shout out to, I believe their name is pronounced. Oh my God, what are you doing? Rad. Rad. <laughs> Rad. Come on now. Mother mm. I just thought maybe you needed to be validated by hearing your own voice. No, I don't echoed, need to hear echoed. that. I hate hearing okay. my own voice. It's fucking horrible. I think I everyone feels that, that way. Yeah. All right. I, I want to thank G. Darude on on the YouTube comment section. They always include page number references to the rules, even if that shit is obscure as hell. Like, can a mech fire a chest weapon while only having one arm? The kind of thing you basically almost never have happen, but they have a rule for it. Wait, can it fire a chest weapon if it doesn't have an arm? That doesn't make sense. You should definitely be able to fire a chest weapon if there's It's also on like, the ground. Oh, it's, if it's prone on the ground, if it yep. can fire. Oh. It. Okay, that's what I was wondering what it was about. So is that a thing? Can they do that? No. You have to have oh, both okay. arms. You have to have both arms to be able to fire. Oh, because it has so to be able to it's just, do its planking or push-ups. I don't know if you can plank missing your lower body. You know that? Missing your lower body? Yeah. I thought, yeah. Like, I thought like losing your legs was pretty much, it was totaled as far as a mech goes. I guess it could still fight, but. People well, say such great things to me in chat. Like, uh, people tell me I'm diligent, and I'm like, was that an insult or a compliment? People said my voice is indistinguishable. Earlier this week, Wait, Sid was like, Arthur, you don't think like a normal person. And I was like, that that sounds like an insult. <laughs> you know, sheep, that's what they mean. Oh, jeez. No, that's not what they mean at all. <laughs> Damn it. It means he's not right in the head. You're not right in the head. Go fuck yeah, yourself, he, he Sid. You belong in a worse leisure center. Go fuck yourself. Because all that is is sheep tied to a lamppost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, boy. Welcome but, back, AP. Yeah, I know. I know. It feels like it's been forever since we did a stream. We did the can call stream Monday, uh, but we Cotton's tried. mic died and Henley showed up like 50 minutes late, so we just stopped the stream at some point after talking about manga for like 40 minutes. <laughs> so it's rough. Okay. It's a rough night. I did start watching Steins Gate though. Oh gosh. All right. Well, look, how far in are you? Pretty far. Um well, I think pretty far. How far is pretty far? There's like 26 episodes. Pretty far. <laughs> uh let's see. Have you I'm heard the anguishing episode. wail of a man who has lost his love? Oh yes. Okay. Um, I'm actually at the point where that's the, not going to be the last one of those you hear. Is getting is getting ready to go. Is getting ready to leave in her time machine. Oh boy, that's rough. That's yeah, rough. They just had you're not that far in, man. The, the big dude it's going to get so much dude. worse. Yeah, the big dude punched the main guy because they're really pissed off at each other. I'm actually I'm very upset by the show. 
I must have missed something like some after credits some because I usually skip through. I usually take a look at the progress bar on Verve, and if it's short enough, I think, okay, there's just ending songs, so I'll skip through. But as I, I, I was watching them, they were in the U.S., and she was telling him, you want to know how I really feel? Close your eyes. And then the very next episode, she was dead. It's like, what? I'm missing you something. Had, you had to watch out about skipping the ending credits because there might be something else. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It back. sounds like you're. I have no idea, man. <laughs> sounds like you missed an episode. See, what I like about Netflix is that it gives you like a little preview, so you'd be like, "All right, let me just double check." Yeah, Skip but you can't you can't watch Steins Gate on Netflix. It's only yeah. on yeah. Crunchyroll Verb. It's good though. I'm digging it. Good. Uh, it's uh, it, it it was about the first three or four episodes i was it was like this is really slow going but i'll have faith in arthur and it was justified should have had faith in lexi she's the one who bothered me for like six months to watch that thing and then i was like don't worry i got this figured out in the first episode i know how it's gonna go and then i was like oh shit this is not what i thought this show was about at all (laughs) there's no steins or gate it's literally just about sideways time traveling i guess yeah, I thought it was interesting they threw in all the John Teeter stuff there. It was kind of like, <laughs> and then in, they erased it. They were literally like, this is a super important plot point. And then like four episodes in, they're like, yeah, that guy doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Look, cool. you're a big fan of Chinese now, so I know that you're a big fan of, uh, what's his name? Hyorin? His like weird mad scientist name. He made up a whole second oh, identity for uh, himself. I can't. I can't remember. I'm so terrible with names. That yeah. yeah you know, basically, are. it's you know yeah. You have the hot redhead scientist, Chris. And Her name the, is Chris. The mad scientist guy. <laughs> and then chubby hacker. That's that's how I did. That's Daru. How can you forget <laughs> Daru's name? It's literally Darud without the D. And then you've got cute warrior girl with the pigtails. And... That's do- oh wait no can't say that. Never mind. That's, that's his daughter. And yeah, so I'll, I'll learn their names eventually. I'm sure. But you're halfway right. through the show. <laughs> and right around the second to last episode, all that's of like going names. through the first season of Game of Thrones and being like, "That's Ned Stark." When you see a dude's head get chopped off. Yeah, but I read the book, so I had, oh I had my characters. God. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Otherwise, it would have Look, been... Look, if you haven't been spoiled on the first <laughs> season of Game of Thrones by now, then let me tell you about how Vader is Luke's father. Well, what? <laughs> by the way, the Roman Empire falls. <laughs> I'm not interested. Wow. Now, now you're telling me that, goes that, that Pompeii Pompeii volcano Pompeii. Like, erupted. Yeah, not only that, but the Holy Roman Empire also fell. That was rough. Persian yeah. Empire like reformed a couple times, but now they're gone again. That's yeah, the Persians. They They'll come back in a couple thousand years. What? The Pompeii. Persians are great. <clears throat> so many spoilers. <laughs> we had, we got serious, actual, real life beef now. The Persian Spoil- Empire. Uh, Got things done. Spoilers. The allies win. Sometimes I wonder, man. Did they really win? (laughs) No, the Axis is just playing the long game. Yeah, I feel like the Axis is just doing that thing where they lie down and pretend to be dead for a while. And then when you're not looking, they stand up and stab you in the back. Rookie no, mistake, see, allies. We all know that this is just a giant game of civilization since China is going for an economic victory. That's Dictatorships true. have been at it way longer than you stupid democracies. You guys don't know shit. You know, I want to say, Sid, there are people that think in Civ 6 you can't win once you fall behind the leaderboard. Yeah, I had can. a Civ 6 game where I was fucking destroying everybody in a multiplayer game. Everybody. All right? I didn't pay attention to China. They were the smallest. They were behind in points. They were trying to go for a religious victory. I thought, this is laughable. I will conquer Beijing and raise it to the ground before the Chinese are a threat to me. So I concentrated on everybody else, worked my way across the continent to the fucking Chinese, and guess what? I took the last city right before Beijing, and there were enough Chinese religious cities in my empire to qualify for being a fucking religious empire and i immediately lost the game because it was just me in china and they had dumb they had religious domination on me <laughs> if i had just skipped that city and gone to beijing i would have won 
I was so mad. I was so yeah, mad, was and I got. You always, got, you always hazed. attack the capital city. That's, that's not, the capital. City, you can't just no. Opening. You can't just drop on a capital city that's in the middle of a fucking continent, man. Like if it's on an ocean, sure, you can do like an amphibious attack, but a capital city that is surrounded by cities, no. You gotta right. secure a supply line so that you can send yeah, your there, wounded know, units back. I know you though. I know you. Even even playing <sighs> against. Uh, in AI, you want to make them suffer. I know no, I was playing against players. That was real players. I, I don't know. No, no, no. Look, look. Here's the thing. Most people put down shitty cities in civilization. If you just capture the important ones and saddle them with the shitty ones, then they're like, I still have units left, but I can't afford to pay for them because these cities are so shitty, and all of my industrial cities were taken. You just, you just cherry pick whatever you want. And so guess what? what? Once once you got all their good cities, then, then you go back and clean them up later. All right. Look, that's enough about civilization. Let's talk <laughs> about this week. It sucked. It was horrible. Uh, some of you might know I'm going to physical therapy because I injured my right knee. And the dude was like, all right, look, I know you said it's been hurting less. And uh, here's the thing. We found the area that's injured, so I'm just going to go ahead get in there i was like don't worry the last few times you guys like did some massaging stuff on it it really didn't hurt that bad and he was like i'm gonna need you to relax i know in the past you've had trouble relaxing and i was like look i'm not gonna be able to relax but it's fine i'm sure it won't hurt at all immediately jams two thumbs directly behind my knee and i can feel it on the other side of my kneecap this shit was so painful it's almost as painful as the time I got stabbed in my hand. That's how bad it was. <laughs> it was incredibly and intensely painful, but at least when I got stabbed in my hand, I got to take the knife out after, like, a second or two. <laughs> this guy was on it for, like, ten minutes. Couldn't walk yeah, today. He, Fucking he horrible. Thought, horrible. You're lucky he didn't press against the pressure point behind your knee because you can lose your power control with that. I'm not joking. I've kicked somebody behind the knee and they freaking crap themselves. I think they had other problems. <laughs> I, even looked at I don't know about the efficacy of pressure points, but I will take your word for it. <sighs> All right. Rad, now that you look like you're distracted and busy, let's go ahead and talk to you. I'm just trying to learn how to play this game that I'm playing tonight. <laughs> Um, I'm good. So, have, oh, wait, wait. So, oh. just to recall, you were the guy that wanted to do a personal <laughs> level combat. That's correct. And then for the five weeks I've been planning it, but haven't been able to do it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. didn't review the rules at all, and then asked what the rules were immediately before we got started. Uh, bravo. That's a very... I just wanted to concisely describe it for the audience. Have transpired up to this point. Um, I remember the first time we did it, it was very, um... It was very straightforward. It was like roll the dice. You know what I mean? Like it was it was as easy as D and D would have been. So that's why I that's why I didn't really look at anything. And then you were like, make sure you brush up. And I was like, I got a little nervous. I was like, I remembered it being really straightforward and easy. And now I mean, I ran a like I ran a simplified version of it that time. Oh, are we doing like full on, full on? Oh God. I mean, that's fine. Like I have all my equipment ready. I know what all my rolls are. I know what my math is. I just. I don't know uh, what Alzheimer's math is. I probably, I don't know about um, all the different monitors, so I just wanted to look at, like, the charts and stuff to see uh, movement. I needed to refresh myself on movement. Anyway, my week's been fine. Um, I had an open house today, so I went and talked to my kid's teacher and uh, did all the parenty type stuff that you have to do with being in a school year, and um, I joined as a PTO, so now I'm a PTO dad. Uh, so I'll be panhandling cookies and other sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, PTO. Yep. So I got that going on. Uh, I got a lot of drawing in this week as things have kind of yeah, calmed yeah. down a little bit from going back to work. So you'll notice on the overlay we have these cool new uh, combat renditions of each of our characters. So that was, that was a lot of fun to work on. It was something I had told Arthur that I was going to do a really long time ago, and then it kind of got put on uh started collecting dust in, on the top shelf and uh knowing that we were going to do combat this week i pulled it back down and did it i did it for fun arthur was like not charge me money but I, I did it for fun so we'll see if i charge him any money um yeah you should charge me money okay maybe just a little 
so uh, he's got me working on a couple other projects. Uh, so I've, I've been drawn a lot, pretty excited about that. I got a, a wedding this weekend that I'm going to. So uh, that'll be pretty cool, I guess. I, also, so my wife has these friends that came in town that are going to this wedding also. And uh, I don't, I don't know the dude, the girl she's been like lifelong friends with. I've hung out with, we've done lots of stuff together. But the the guy I haven't met before because he's just not coming down from the north, and apparently he needs advice on how to go to a southern wedding, and that was a concept that was a little alien to me. I was like, "What? Bring I, a I shotgun." I was, yeah. I was like, "What does he mean?" That was my wife. She was like, "He he wants to know what you're gonna wear. He, he's never been to a southern wedding." I'm like, "I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know southern weddings were any different from northern weddings." And she was uh, like, "She was like, people dress way down for southern weddings." Um, I was like, okay, I guess. I mean, I've been I've been to weddings in Chicago and I've been to weddings in the South, so I don't I don't really know. So, like, do, you, I, do you for Southern weddings? Do you not dress up? Or I mean, we I I do typically do. I have the easy out of I just wear a military uniform, right? Like I just I just slap on, I just pull it out of the the bag and slap it on, shave my face, and I'm like, boom, I'm the most professional looking dude there. Um. So that's uh, that's like a cheater for me. I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, you tell me. Do you see a scenario where you would wear blue jeans to a wedding? No. Oh my god, you don't even want to know. I'm going to say that's a yes for Pondo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's not that. Okay, I'll explain. Uh, it's it's more mostly just a part of the family that's a little too it's mostly just one guy who uh who showed up to a wedding in a hawaiian shirt oh nice. jorts and sandals get, get it all right well uh <laughs> i've i personally have worn blue jeans to a wedding uh and i will probably wear blue jeans again to this wedding this weekend so i guess that's the difference between a northern wedding wedding and a southern wedding um it, it is not uncommon for people to wear well-fitted blue jeans a tucked in dress shirt and like a sports coat or like a vest and tie like it's it's not it's like i don't know a step and a half below business casual if that makes sense it's like it's like casual friday at the office i guess a little bit Uh, i think and if that's if it's someone you're distant to right like if it's a friend of a a friend of a friend or or not like a, a lifelong friend kind of person like that's perfectly appropriate also depends on the venue um anytime i've ever been to like a a family member or a close friend's wedding i see that's my scale that's how i rate it like the closer i am to the wedding party the higher level of dress that i go the farther i am from the wedding parter party the lower level of dress that i go so yeah um, it's it's very dependent on who you're going wedding you're going to if you you know them about yeah this is the first time this season i have worn a shirt with buttons on it Ooh. Mm. Dressing up is not a thing. I like <laughs> it's not to a do. thing you do. And I'm actually not. That's that's really odd. You just do like the Audrey Hepburn like black turtleneck. That's like your dress up shirt. You're like I'm wearing a turtleneck. No, I would just wear a t shirt. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm big on vest. Like I sweat a lot. I'm a very sweaty person. So uh, when I wear a sport ch- coat or a jacket, I get extremely sweaty. So I try to avoid it. So I don't know. I, somebody asked in chat if it's in, an outdoor wedding. And I actually have no idea if it's indoor or outdoor. But I will probably get away with a uh, nice button-up shirt with a vest and some blue jeans and my sleeves rolled up so as not to uh, melt into a puddle of sweat. Um, yeah, and a, a loosely tied tie. Is it? Is it in Texas? Is... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just don't understand that. I think it's up near Dallas. Uh, I don't know. My, you know, I just go wherever my wife tells me to go. <laughs> just works out, to be honest. Like hasn't hasn't done me wrong yet. I can understand that. She was like, "Hey, we're going to Hawaii in four months." I was like, "Cool. I guess I'll come too." She's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bought you a ticket. You're coming." Like, okay. So She's like, "We have a wedding this weekend." I'm like, "All right." She's like, what are you wearing? She's like, I don't know. I the house to myself for a week. Yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite too. So, so yeah, that's what I got going on. Um, what else? Oh, I started watching. I'm, I realize I'm I like a, I don't know, like a decade late on this, but I started watching Arrested Development on Netflix. Uh, what a good show. I so still haven't watched it, so don't feel bad. Yeah, it's really good. You know, it's one of those shows you always hear about, but I was like, I'm never going to have the time to watch, like, some old show. But uh, it's very worth it. Little baby Michael Sarah is on it, and he's pretty funny. and um, It's a good show. It's pretty funny. 
I, I, I recommend it. So he's looking up some screenshots here. Yeah, it's good. Wait, series 2003 to blank. It's like 15 years and it's ongoing. I don't know if it's ongoing. That would really, no, I don't think it is ongoing anymore. What? You know, it's, you know, it's really like interesting about rewatching like old shows. Like, uh, recently as uh, law and order SVU came on, it's like a really, really old episode where they had like the oh. big tube computer monitors and so stuff. It's just, that's crazy. The, old, the very old, seeing the vintage uh, technology CRT monitor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they yeah, were they, did, uh, they were pretending to zoom and enhance long before they could zoom and enhance. Yeah, uh, two thousand three <laughs> through two thousand six, and then two thousand thirteen, and then two thousand eighteen. Maybe they did a couple like reunion uh, shorts or something. I don't know. Um, it was a very beloved show at the time. I had never seen it before in my whole life. So I watched a couple episodes and it was immediately like, all right, this is a show I can watch. So I've, I've made it through the whole first season now. Uh, it's good. I recommend it. Uh, yeah, beyond that, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of exciting things to talk about really this week. It's pretty run in the middle week, week for me. I had, I had Battle Assembly last weekend. Uh, and I guess the good news there is I'll probably be transferring units to my original unit, so I won't have to commute to Dallas anymore to go to Battle Assembly. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is I'll still be on quick response status. So, like, that unit, um, I was involuntarily transferred to it because they had to fill up all their numbers so that they could be deployed at a moment's notice to go places and do things. But they were only on that status for, like, a year. And then, and then the status rolls over to the next unit, and the next unit is my old home unit. So I just get involuntarily transferred back to where I was before I left. So <laughs> that sucks. But uh, so I'm still under that like crappy status. But uh, I don't now. I drive 20 minutes to Battle Assembly instead of driving four and a half hours to Battle Assembly. And I don't have to deal with like the travel car or hotel rooms or barracks or any of that kind of nonsense. So pretty happy about that. Played some D and D last weekend a lot too so that was cool uh started with a new group of a bunch of newbies so i don't i don't know yet how that's gonna go but we'll see and uh, i dm'd another session with my family and we had a great time that's it that's me keeping it short sid what's going on with you honestly right now a whole fat lot of nothing <laughs> that's right i had a bunch of day job stuff again this week, and uh, I was going to be do working on a video last night. I sat down and started calling up all my different uh, browser windows to refresh everything, and I got a phone call and had to immediately get back up and leave again. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was fun, and I was working until about 4.30 this morning. Go home, sleep for about three hours, and then go back to work. So that's basically it. I'm up to 82,000 subscribers, so ever closer to that 100K range. Keep telling myself to not stare at the numbers that they're not that they're not relevant and they'll come with time, but it's kind of hard not to. That's basically all I got. We we tried to have a gang call on Monday and that fell through and that that made me very sad. But I'll survive because I get to I get to watch a ninja try and kill Pondo. So and all mm -hmm, of us, and and, uh, and all the rest of us too. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. My bullshit ability finally came to effect. Now it will never come into effect again after this. But hey, well, see, no, you have the bullshit ability, which means you'll probably be the only one to survive. <laughs> no, you guys will hear the gunshot here in a second. I can oh, Bandito's oh. shooting beer cans again. I like how you think you're going to be able to hear this gunshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're in a factory where they're repairing mechs. Oh, never mind. I like how you think they're going to be hearing anything. <laughs> never don't mind. You, don't you have like a suppressor on your gun too? No, I don't. I don't, I, know. Okay. I think I don't know about the number of right. shotgun suppressors that he has lying around. Well, I hey, they make them. They do make That's them. true, but I prefer to put loudeners on my shotguns. That's <laughs> true. A shotgun it's like having a dog, has... right? <laughs> you let out a blast, <laughs> let them know that you're there. Yeah, that that cone around their head. That's not that's not about it. Not scratching its head. That's for volume. Yeah, just duct tape a megaphone onto the end of the shotgun. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, and I have uh, people messaging me on on Twitter saying, "Hey, Rig Gunner's streaming right now. You should go check it out." I'm kind of on a stream, but thanks. I should maybe come watch the stream instead. It's better. It's true. It's a rough life. What? What? I mean, I don't know. I'd say that my stream's better than yours, objectively. Subjectively, sure. I was subjectively, but only well, because you never stream anymore. No, it's better than someone else's stream that is going on right now. That's true. I mean, I mean Critical Role doesn't start for another 15 minutes, so. Oh, I'm all caught up on Critical Role also. Wow, you're I, way ahead of me now, man. Yeah. They just I, had I, Callie I, I, leave I, the party. Started, That's how I far back I am. I like. I watched the first, the very, like the very first two episodes. I'm like, to be honest, this is kind of boring. Yeah, man. Which it's season? Really, one or two? Like the very first. Wow. Oh, I could never get into season one. It was a slog. Season two takes a while to ramp up, season but then it gets really too. fucking good. I wouldn't say it's really good, like fucking good, but it's it's gotten better. Like it's good. Mm. Um, there's there's I haven't caught up the, from what I've seen. Critical World. There's like episodes where it's just like really slogging along, and then there's like the combat. Of, there's, Look, there's, I want to tell you guys something about a little type of entertainment I call professional wrestling. The thing about tabletop role... Wow, Rad, really? You're going to give me that face? The no, thing I'm, about I'm tabletop role-playing game shows is that they are like professional wrestling. Like Sometimes this is a good analogy. you get shitty Detroit backstage jobbers who just show up in order to get punched in the face by Triple H. And then, after three weeks of that and setting up a storyline, you get SummerSlam, and then you get Undertaker putting Kane, Mankind, through table... <laughs> 19 i don't remember the meme now <laughs> in get, front of me you get kurt angle spraying down uh what's his face with from a milk truck yeah exactly Steve austin <laughs> man professional wrestling isn't dead i think it's more alive than it's ever been the thing you got to remember is, is yeah, the is. wrestling isn't real it's fake it's like a soap opera the writing yeah what? the as as ridiculous i don't know i i went through my wrestling phase right and i really enjoyed it i don't watch it anymore I'm was it right around it. the time where the rock and stone cold were yeah, all so getting was, big right at the that, 2000s like, it's just during that big resurgent era, yeah. era right yeah. um triple h yes yeah, so all that was like real big stone and cold kane and the undertaker and the the hardy boys and the dub like the the, the three big tag teams were doing yep. their thing all the time right mm, attitude era maybe, yeah that, that was a big time that sounds right. Um, this is pretty much Steve Austin, Rock, all the all those guys. Yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. The attitude area. Uh, I don't know. It was great. Like the the writing is really good. It's the the programming is at its best when it's not taking itself seriously, and all of the characters are like caricatures of actual characters. You know what I mean? Like uh, they're so ridiculous and over the top. And that's why I always really liked the Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Kurt Angle character because no one is like that. Like that's not a real person. You know what I mean? Like there's no attempt for this to be like believable drama. Uh, so so good. I don't know. I really enjoyed how um, I don't know kitschy it was. I guess maybe is the right word to use. Uh, it was one of my favorite things. Uh, yeah, so I, so yeah, I, I think the writing is pretty brilliant. I I like your analogy. So sometimes you get, you know, but I just didn't get into it. Yeah, that's fair. Sometimes so you get an episode where Hitman chases you around the map, and then sometimes you get an episode where Rad does a 15-minute long emotional speech, <laughs> or you get an episode <laughs> where there's little girls named after pieces of bread. bread? Yeah. yeah, like sometimes you gotta sit through the shitty parts to work towards the the you know crescendos. I actually yeah. got you know, I got the into wrestling doctor, because of the uh, Nintendo 64 game. wrestling game. That's what got me into wow. watching wrestling. Nintendo yeah. 64. That's a. I was, I was playing the game. It was like I don't know what it was. W O N W O versus W W F or I don't I don't remember what it was. But I had never watched wrestling, and I got this game, this Nintendo 64 game, and it's like one of the best games I ever had. I had incre I had an incredible amount of fun making my own wrestler and like putting in the own my own moves and all this kind of stuff. NWO uh, yeah. versus WCW. Yep, that's what it was right there. Oh my god, I loved that game. And then there were several others that came, you know, after that. Uh, that that me and my brother and my friends we just played nonstop. We wore out Nintendo sixty four controllers playing that game. Like we literally broke the sticks off of them. Um, if you've ever if you've ever played a lot of Nintendo sixty four, you know that after a long time, like the control stick starts feeling like it's full of sand. 
Because mm. uh, it is full of sand. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all the plastic is just grated off of it and like made this like this they, uh, this, this beach yeah. of plastic grindings at the bottom of it. They weren't uh, the best. Starbucks yeah, sixty four. That's where it's at. It, it was a true like button smasher. It was really good. Um, we would get sweaty like getting. We got so intense playing that game. And that's when we started like trying to do wrestling moves on like mattresses and stuff in the backyard. And yeah, that, yeah. that eventually led to watching wrestling to me. Yep. Like, how do we do this without breaking our stupid ass necks? Practice uh, 60 hours a yeah. week. And then we, yeah. we all kind of got sucked in and everybody would come over the house and we'd all watch like Monday night raw or was well, the Thursday, Thursday Smackdown, right? Was it or Tuesday? I don't remember what day. It they was switched the days so many times for both shows now. But yeah, we were all about it uh, for a couple of years. We, we stayed pretty into it. I went to a couple of live events. If you're not into wrestling at all, never been into wrestling, think wrestling is kind of dumb, go to a live event because it's actually a lot of fun. It's an incredible amount of fun. And especially go to a untelevised one. We, I've been to both. Can't been confirm. to a, a televised one and an untelevised one. But if you go to an untelevised one, it's on like a Tuesday night or something like that. Um, they really ham it up. Like the characters, they go... They go above and beyond like ridiculous. Uh, they, they're like pulling down they're, like pants in each other and uh, all kinds of funny stuff. They come out and they're like, they insult the crowd and like throw like racial slurs at people. Like, yeah, no, that's uh, the jobbers that need to get the crowd worked up so that yeah. when the guy comes in and is like, is this Detroit? And everyone's like, yeah, Detroit. Fuck this guy that was saying shit about Detroit earlier. And they're like, yeah. that's right. It's me, Detroit man, here to yeah. lay the smack down on all these jabronis. Yeah. They go all out. It's really entertaining. Like I was yeah. definitely laughing so hard. I was crying uh, when I went. So uh, fun show. Good time. And it's really, if you go to an untelevised event, it's really not that expensive. It's not as expensive as you would think it would be. So uh, yeah, I don't know how we got on that sidebar, but wrestling was fun. I, I don't have any interest in it anymore, but I enjoy, I enjoyed my time with professional wrestling. Look, if you have watched wrestling or haven't watched wrestling, basically just fucking watch it. There is a YouTube video called Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, which will show it's you really good. how wrestling isn't about wrestling and that it's a giant soap opera. But following the 20-year career of Triple H, uh, so they get many professional actors to do gender flip versions of all the characters involved, including several professional wrestlers who show up to either play their opposite gender or play themselves. And <laughs> it's... Super weird, but very good. Wrestling isn't wrestling. Look it up. Speaking of things you should look up, Pond of the Mad. I heard you were going to start streaming again. Tell me more about this. Yes, tomorrow, in fact. My God, uh, well, that's a lot sooner than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I just have been really kind of uh, busy yet again this week. As in, I had to work yesterday. Uh, I had to go down south to get something to take care of as far as vehicle-wise. Uh, had to get inspected and registered and all that, make sure it was not illegally dro- driven. And uh, there's been a lot of driving recently. Been a lot of traveling recently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, tomorrow I should probably we'll start about 1, 2 o'clock Eastern time. So, yeah. i also been watching a crap ton of Reunion Kitchen. Like, I'm currently having you know i actually watched season. uh episode 11 today from the first season where aroshi shinomori shows up for the first time and they're like leader i'll take the bullet for you leader and i'm like yeah, yeah. there's no way a dude that big isn't gonna eat all the bullets and they're like no we need another person to eat the bullets and i'm like no that dude is literally like eight feet tall and six feet wide he will eat the bullets for you it's fine yeah just use the body to keep pushing the other thing i'm just really weird don't really understand is how that one average Joe Richie pompous guy is able to keep up with the with a Gatling gun and just able to keep up with the so-called godlike speeds. No, the- look, here's the thing. They were like, this Gatling gun can fire 200 rounds a minute. And I'm like, that's, that's great. But that Gatling gun is firing like eight to 10 rounds a second, which is not 200 rounds a minute. It's firing way faster than what that guy said. Look, Roni Kenshin is a lot of things, but accurate is not one of them. No, no, no. Awesome it's, is possibly one of them on occasion. It's uh, sometimes it's really cheesy. Sometimes it's pretty good. Sometimes it's just really ridiculous with some of the stuff. Like mostly, 
just mostly some of the like it's, it's very commonplace where the character's like, "Are you Batosai, the Man Slayer?" And like, "Yes, I am. I'm gonna kill you now." Okay, and they just get knocked out. It's mostly the whole, "Ah, you moved your foot forward, so I move my foot back to dodge your attack," type situation. I read through all your moves. Look, the thing about Hiten Mitsurugi style that always gets me is that it's all two stage operation. So whenever Kenshin fails, he's like, but secretly, you didn't know that this is a two stage move. And I was like, you've literally bragged about that in every fight you've ever been in. There's no way people couldn't possibly anticipate that if you fail, there will be a second stage move. And yet everyone is always surprised. It's like House figuring out what the problem is. Yep. Everyone's like, House, how did you know that it was bird shit that landed in his mouth while he was taking a nap? And I'm just like, it's, it's fucking House, man. He'll figure it out. Just I know how this show mess works. Mess it up the first time, be like, "Oh wait, this is actually the problem, not this." Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> really not stop. He needs rap blood immediately. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I heard this. Thought this the it, that just reminds me of the whole uh, uh, ice tea meme with SVU ball <laughs> <and> trucks. <laughs> He's just like it's just crushed up gingerbread cookies. <laughs> Crush and up pipe cleaner, and they pipe cleaner. they call it the wicked witch. <laughs> God, the guy who does that meme generator on Twitter, he's got his work cut out for him. And he always one ups himself. You got anything else going on, Pondo? Uh, no, that's about it. That's All right, about it. I'm getting just. Wondering how screwed I am if I miss this one shot. That's all. Probably pretty screwed. You know that Eminem song that starts out with, you know, like a distorted electric guitar and he's like, you got one shot, one opportunity. Uh, Your palm should be uh, heavy because if you miss the shot, you're going to be knee deep in shit uh, and your your shirt will be covered not in mom's spaghetti, but with your intestines. Because of sword. Wow, that was the worst. Essentially, this is reenacting, partially reenacting the scene from Indiana Jones, but if I can easily just screw this up. Uh, here's the thing I want to remind you is that shotguns have really terrible penetration in this game. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. Yep, super I, shitty. I, 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 I'd probably just going to use a Yeah, but a rifle. headshots. Yeah, we're not doing headshots. <laughs> that would really suck if we did headshots because there's no... There's no stopping that that's kind of you would take a minus five on your roll to attempt a headshot if we were doing them what arthur says we're not we're not english what do you got going on i'm in english but i've been my week's been pretty all right got my new mic as you can probably tell for in chat blue yeti uh not yeti yeti's a different mic it's blue snowball um yeah, I've been, I streamed up with it on the day I got it, so that was on Tuesday. I streamed some, one, um, streamed some, I can't remember what I streamed, but I streamed Destiny a bit. Um, one Sunshine, and all other sorts of games. I've been streaming here and there all week. And forgetting to retweet myself some t- some of the times. That's a problem. That is a problem. Yeah. But rarely anyone but retweets me. I get like the odd uh, commodity retweet when I actually tweet the game game I'm playing from a big uh, freaking person with loads of t- followers and stuff. But no one ends up freaking in the ends up in the chat. It takes time. Yeah. But yeah, my week's been pretty good. Messing up my sleep schedule as usual. No chat. We're not allowing called crotch shots. Oh man. Really, Sid? Really? (laughs) What? That sounds like something, totally sounds like something Aridin would do. (laughs) Sounds like something that would happen to you, given that you literally have no eyes right now. That's, That's very, very true. Pat, Pat. I should my blessings. <laughs> you got anything else going on, English? Um, 
not at the moment, still searching for work as usual. Oh, but yeah, not much always available for anything. Okay. Um, that show that I've been working on for a while is preparing to launch New Game Plus. Did That's you find your fourth person? I mean, we have several people that want the fourth slot now. Um, we'll see who ends up taking it. That's a good problem to have. I mean, that I means mean, turning down a bunch of people as well. So? What <sighs> game is this, may I ask? It's a 5e game. It's like I mean, obviously, Dark you want Souls. the best entertainers you possibly can get. Yeah, but unfortunately, they I just literally can't get a hold of Terra Strong. I mean, I just keep trying. Well, let me see what I can I miss that reference. Don't worry about it. Tara Strong is a voice actress that did a lot of characters. She did Riku you, from Final Fantasy X. I'll tell you who you don't want is that girl from Critical Role. Which girl from Which Critical one? Role? Which one? Marissa Ray? Yes. Oh, my wow, God. Wow, Jesus. You guys are going to start a fire on here. You know that <laughs> I haven't been back to Eric's Whoa. Discord server ever since someone was like, Marisha Ray is an angel and she never does anything wrong. And I was like, look... She's had five years to learn her character, and she still gets shit wrong. Matt has literally printed out her spells on laminated cards, and she still gets it wrong. And he's like, fuck you, you fucking misogynist pig. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you, you fucking Look, idiot? And someone was like, sure. Arthur, calm down! And I was like, <laughs> he said fuck like eight times, and I said fuck once, and I'm the one flipping out? Are you kidding me? I'm out, bitches! Dude, every time she opens her mouth, I ask myself, why am I listening to this show? Cause oh, man, the, you're, listen, she's, she's so not that bad. bad. Oh, she is, she's not though. that she's bad. She's so bad. She's, like, she's the kind of person that I would spend five minutes with in real life and walk out of a room never to associate <laughs> with that person again for the rest mm. of my life. She I'm is so with, obnoxious. Look, I, it's I, rough I, because I, she's got to stand up against question. people like Liam and Sam. and like It's true. Get up and leave. She's got yeah. she's got a tough competition. She's not the worst. Sam, Sam Laura. I would walk in and sit down and start nodding my head as she spoke, and then go, mm, "Yeah, oh, all right." <laughs> <laughs> I can't she's, stand for your Marisha hate. Her, her 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 character is hands down the worst character on the show, like easily, and she's also the worst player on the show. I will I will give it to you that she is definitely sitting at the table with at least two or three like heavyweight contenders when it comes to I think pretty much playing. everybody at that table is a heavy week. Pretty much everyone, I, d yeah. I don't i think i think two maybe three of them are great um i mean sam uh, liam laura the rest uh, are Travis. okay and and talazin and, was much better in the first campaign but that's yeah, because not, he was he's okay uh, yeah his new character is not so super good she, she's bad um the guy that plays ford um yeah, travis I feel him. like he was. I hear a lot of great things about stuff he did in the first season. But yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty unremarkable in the second season. Basically, the only thing he's there for are jokes on his name. Um, and then I feel like you are underestimating his level of leadership. Like he subtly pulls the whole party together constantly. A little bit, but not through like, not through force. He's of the character. one keeping them being a responsible adult. He's just in attendance, like just by just by virtue of attendance, not because he's like, mm. not because he's doing anything. I feel like they just look to him because those players know that the characters need to look to someone. Oh no, that was actually character... Marisha's role in the last season. She She's was trash. the party leader. She's trash. Oh my gosh, Rad, you're gonna. <laughs> there's gonna be a jihad Wait, she... on the forums. Um, She's gonna be bad. Marisha was the party leader. Yeah, Marisha was the party leader. She's a garbage person. She was um, literally the princess of the fucking air wow, people. A garbage person. Look, okay, I'm being harsh. I don't know her personally. I'm sure she's a <sighs> fine individual in real life. I'm sure she donates to charity and is yeah, nice she to donates the eight two six L eight. Well, they all well their company does, right? I'm sure. I'm sure they she's personally more... donate the critical role proceeds to them. That's good. I'm sure she's a fine person. Oh. I don't like. I don't like her. I, it's, okay, I got I'm, it. You don't like a role playing game style. I'm allowed to not like that's true. Nice people, okay. Um, <laughs> it happens all the time. I but, don't. I, I dislike nice people all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the guy who plays not. I don't know their Sam Regal. Sam Regal. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, Sam Regal's top tier. 
And I did not think so when I first watched the show. I was like, this voice is obnoxious. It's grating on me. I don't like it. I'm not into this. He's- and and over the course of about eight episodes, I would I was all in. On Were you that watching character. the intros where he does the D and D Beyond every week? Yes, amazing. Yeah, he fucking right? kills it. <laughs> He's incredible. That's because yeah. he played a bard in the first season and would sing his spells. I also it's saw a-, a clip of him coming out on stage when they did one of their live shows. Oh, He's he came got- out as regular Noel. No, he comes out in like a uh, like a a skin tight suit on yeah. like quad skates with like a glow in the dark cod piece and like yeah he's, he's ridiculous <laughs> for like it had, didn't have anything to do with the show whatsoever it's like he lost a bet and he just had to I'm come out as like a roller derby queen uh it was amazing i was like this this guy is everything i wish i was yeah. in life sam it's the same sam and not is that he he had immediate regrets like the first episode when he decided to do that voice yeah i could tell <laughs> He even said it. It's like, oh my god, this is the voice I'm going with now. He's clearly a professionally charming person, right? Like that's what he does as his job. He's, he's ridiculous. Um, and I mean, he just won several very large awards for he acting them. and voice acting. And uh, the guy who plays Caleb Liam, I think, is his name. Yeah, Liam also, O'Brien. Also fantastic. That's I, not th- surprising because yeah. he voices a bunch of Star Wars characters. You mentioned you mentioned to me in Discord that those two carry the show on their back, and I think yeah, that's very Sam true. and Liam. Yep. They absolutely carry their show on the back, and Jester, the Laura, is a very close third. Like those three, I feel like are the are the really great role players on that show. The other people. In season so- one, you would have included Travis in that. Probably right because I I I like I like him. I just don't think he does enough to really like de- deserve a lot of accolades. You know what I mean? Like um, I don't know if he's purposefully taking a little bit like less of a spotlight role. Or maybe I mean, in the last his, campaign, the last his game, character was... couldn't read, couldn't count, and would only say, "I would like to rage." That's great. His I mean, this this he's taking more of a spotlight role honestly than the yeah. last campaign. Okay. He's, uh, he doesn't. Maybe, we're just, we're just going to all... disagree on this point. Yeah, I feel like fine. he does. I think this the season is very comedy driven, and I just made, I don't just maybe think that's not mm-hmm. his like that's not his character in this show. I don't know. They're just they get up into like these zany hijinks, and you're right, he's the only one that's like, well, this is what we were supposed to do today. But I don't think that in and of itself makes him like a phenomenal role player. Maybe he is. I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying I haven't seen anything like I've seen from Liam and Sam that make me go, whoa, this guy's amazing. You know what I mean? I think I think he's good. He's not yet convinced me that he's great. Those other three, I think, are great. Uh, everyone else is just mediocre uh, or bad. If their name uh, Man, starts with an M, I really don't want to see the cast of Critical Role watch this show break <laughs> us down. Oh, yeah, Pull up Lucio. I, I, oh yeah, this is definitely like some armchair quarterbacking. Like I don't I don't hold a candle to any of these people, even the garbage person. So. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm being overly crim- normal, I'm being overly critical of Marisha Ray for uh, comedic effect. I'm sure she's a wonderful person. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not going to send her hate mail on Twitter. Don't worry. She like that. Don't she back. actually don't has an back. active faction of people that do hate her for you. See, I didn't know that. I thought it was just me. Like, cause nah, I she hung- has a cabal hung- of people who fucking okay. hate her. Like, I legit. Get hung up on, I get hung up on things, so I, you know, I just accept that. Like, I don't. I mean, obviously, some, I'm not a fan of her. Like, I I nonsensically don't like people sometimes, and I'm just I've, I'm that's at true. Peace with that. I know that you've been like, I hate this person that's on your show, and I'm like, that's weird. You're like, wow, you know, that's weird, like right? That person, I'm like, I don't know. I just something about him, just automatic. I'm like, I don't, I'm not into it. Uh, I get that from a lot of people. <laughs> Sorry, Sid. I'll, I'll, I'll take back that letter then. But yeah, I feel like I always want to be on Arthur's show, and I bug him about it all the time. And Arthur is probably silently to himself. He's like, Rad would not get along with any of my other cast members. Like, I can only put him. That's like- not true. I literally, <laughs> you were like, Arthur, I fucking want to be on New Game Plus. And I was like, I'll move Dude. heaven and earth to make it happen. And you're like, I can't do it. And I was uh, like, I was prepared to go the distance for you, Rad. I'm telling you, I wanted to be on that show so bad because. Pondo then, was like, I want to be on that show, too. And I was like, okay. And he's like, every day except Wednesday. And I was like, well, Wednesday looks like it's, it's going to be that day. Yeah, it was and Wednesday would have been the best day for me, but my <sighs> wife went back to school this semester. So it's right. like, I can't do I can't do that many nights with an obligation, you know? So it was, there will it was, be a time and a place when I can be on more than one show, but it's just, it's not yet. And I want to be on a and d show with you. I want to be on a fifth edition show with you. And I just... After this one, I don't know when you're going to do another one. So Hell, if you need a special guest, I'm free at free Wednesdays. Because you run a lot of those really deep political systems. And like I don't yes, know if that, that's that just not really like my me. that's not really my cup of tea most of the time. I mean, 
We're literally playing a deep political system game right okay. now. I mean, we you are. are. <laughs> I'm playing a drunk sergeant that just. I know that you really want your character to die. You're you you confessed that the other night. You were like, all of my characters have a hero complex and are martyrs. And they I was like, are. I remember when you wouldn't kill Beaumont, uh, and it destroyed yeah, you. It did. Oh my god. It that was probably the greatest example of the players creating their own final boss. It's true, but I did go on later to have that really great escape scene uh, where it was held captivity. So I don't know. It still wasn't worth it. Still should have killed them, but it's all right. There would have had to be a new final boss then. If Butch McGurk doesn't die soon, he's just gonna he's just gonna retire. He's gonna go out Breakfast Club style and just hold the fist up, Soldier Seventy Six. Oh, you! Gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna walk into the sunset. Forget about me. <laughs> go back to the farm and uh, what farm? Uh, the farm from where he came from. He came. He comes from a farm. farm. Where, 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 I assume where? Kenneth Cross burned it down. <laughs> where, where carrots? No, that's my farm. I don't know. Yeah, that was his farm. No, I'm assuming he's just going to burn down all of the farms. He's going to uh, go back to. Well, that's assuming that Butch McGurk is his real name and his actual identity. Well, you know, you didn't take any secret identity talents, so that his, is your his real, real name. name. His real name is Francis Peabody. No, uh, your real name is Butch McGurk. <laughs> You're not investing the skills for this false identity. You didn't, you, yeah, you didn't take Chuni during character creation, so you well, can't a, have a second persona. That's a good lesson learned for when I make my second character. Have a secret second persona. <laughs> I need to have a. I need to have a couple of aliases. Yeah, of course. That's why every time I play D and D, I take charlatan so that I can have a complete <laughs> second persona, including having a signet ring, so I can pretend to be a duke or something. I was on that Swargula stream, and I was like, "Look, everyone over there, there's something." And then I was like, I quickly put on my cape and pretend to be a new person with a mask. <laughs> my name is Duke Derek Drake. <laughs> I've showed up out of nowhere to assist you. Everyone went along with it. It was crazy. Just my ring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then my favor, peasants. Duke Derek Drake would disappear at the end of combat <laughs> after he pointed off in a random direction. It was crazy. That's yeah. what I got. All right. Do we have anything to discuss this week? No, I'm good. Wow, we're ending before an hour long intros. I feel like we're failing our are audience you, here, guys. Are you sure? Yeah, for fifty two minutes in. I got bring We started the, super early because Rad was here on time. Is it only fifty two minutes in? Is is fifty two minutes and eighteen seconds. So is the worst we need to buy the extra time, eight minutes? By on time you mean only seven minutes late. Yeah, I mean that's on time for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could bring up something, but I don't. All right, that's great. Let us cut to the parts that are important. Battletech Bingo is next week, not this week. I'm sorry if you showed up live to play Battletech Bingo. I think that's literally zero people did that, but if you did, I apologize. All the Battletech Bingo squares have to do not with personal combat, but with uh, murder, Mech death time combat. Yeah, the big ones. Second so off... If you skip the intros, English has a new mic. You can say hello to him on the YouTubes by going to at English Mike Hip and telling him how his mic sounds. Third off, uh, the players... Try Twitter, not YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. I do have a YouTube, but it's old. Old as old hell. I need the players to make sure they know how to play this game. And I to do that, that, I'm going to remind all of you how to do this. I, uh, need, I have a question. Yes. What does MOS stand for? Margin of success. Every Great. two points is one margin of success. Got it. All right. So uh, you all need to know the following things. Your bod score, your will score, your edge score, the score you use to shoot or stab people with, and the skill rating on it, plus your equipment and its uh, individual ratings. So before you yeah. go off and start looking those things up, I need you to pay attention to me right here. I'm snapping. Your HP is equal to twice of your BOD score. For every okay. hit that you currently have against you in mech combat, uh, you two, lose right? 2 HP, essentially 1 BOD score. Your fatigue rating is twice your will rating. So if you have a will of 6, you have a fatigue of 12. Fatigue sets in once you exceed your will rating. If you completely run out of fatigue, you fall over and die. If you run out of HP, you die. Okay. Uh, you'll need your edge just in case you want to re-roll. Of course, you should all have at least one edge because I gave you one edge at the end of the last combat. I think I have to. You'll need your uh, your weapons ratings, and then you'll need to know your weapon stats, which include uh, the first is the number and the type of shot it does, and the second is... Sorry, the first is armor penetration rating, 
The letter is uh, the type of damage it does. The slash indicates the damage it does. And if it has a B on the end, that means it's burst fire. Uh, in which case, it should have a recoil number as well. It says recoil and minus one. I think, do we Yes, have, that means every add? time you fire an extra shot, you take a minus one to all of the shots. Unless you have a recoil compensation. Yes, Blood which stock. will still eventually get overloaded by shooting too many shots. Uh, B, 1B slash 4BS. So if we yes. wanted to do, is it one shot first and we want to do another shot, we go ahead and just roll it again you have to minus one you have to declare the number of shots you're doing when you shoot okay so say like uh, i want to shoot two shots we would do we would roll with a minus one since yes. it's the one shot you what you're going to want to look up burst fire rules uh you don't roll multiple shots when you're burst firing you That's just use the margin of success uh increases much faster you right. also need to know your armor rating okay I got that. I think most of you should probably have like flak or something like that. I have an LA helmet, LA jacket, flak shorts, LA gloves. And right. flak flak shorts. I should have drawn you with shorts. <laughs> I have a fly, I have a ballistic vest and all right. Just make sure you know all of your armor ratings, uh, so that when I shoot you, you will yeah. say, "This is my armor rating." So yeah, while you're looking those things up, I'm gonna set the stage for us once again. We find ourselves on a certain planet, and that planet is called Rubijin and the Draconis Combine, along the border with the uh, Free Rasselhag Republic. After two straight days of fighting, the party is found itself trapped inside of a factory where certain replacement parts and refit kits are made for battle mechs. Four prime movers supplied by their client with a, hero, uh, a host and array of techs from both the client and their own company are there, including their primary tech and primary Aztec, Baron, Baron, and uh, Diego Garcia. Wait, Baron, Baron? Yeah, he's a Baron, and his name is, his call sign's Baron, so technically he's Baron, Baron. Baron, Baron. Baron. <clears throat> Which is not his actual name, of course, because it's a call sign. <laughs> Never mind. Seems legit. Yeah. Look, his actual name is Dr. Sure. Michael Waring. <laughs> I thought that was going to be one so of the situations his like... Title was Baron, his, his call sign is Baron, his name was Baron, then he could be Baron, Baron, Baron. No. Yeah, you know, like in Powerpuff Girls, the mayor's name was Mayor. So Mayor the Mayor. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor. They're, they had the episode where they vote Mayor for Mayor. It was very weird. I would rather <laughs> vote John Mayor for Mayor. Their contract is not with the Draconis Combine, but instead with the Rasselhag Republic uh, in a rogue black market deal. Oh yeah, I also want to thank WJ for showing up for this session. They've been uh, desperately attempting to find the correct night where we were in Battletech and showing up in the stream over the last week. You have finally <laughs> arrived, sir. You have hey, finally welcome. arrived at the correct night. Good to see you. Glad yeah. you could make it. Welcome. Look around. All right, well, thanks for playing, everybody. Have a <laughs> Wow. All right, <laughs> so we're going to go around the circle. Gold Hirsch, mm -hmm. where are you right now in the factory? Uh, last time I checked, I was in the makeshift medical ward treating everyone. Excellent. Heavy 7, uh, if I recall, you were in the barracks area alone, uh, sitting on a cot facing an office desk, eating a pocket hot dog. Correct. And drinking. Correct. All right. I want you to mark down on your character sheet that you've been drinking and have a minus one. Okay. Uh, that's minus on top one. of any other penalties you have. Minus just... one, drunk. Yep. So you're, you're at minus two now, actually, because you were injured and then, yeah. We uh, all got injured, which is the funny part. Yeah. yeah, the minus one isn't actually from the alcohol, it's from the pocket dogs. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> minus one for drunk, minus one for injured. Got Sid, it. Sid, where is Captain Maxwell Harridan? Um, after I finished sending the kid on his way to get chewed out by dad, I went to the medical bay. All right. To get, to get patched up. <clears throat> Warren officer, Vincent gray life has slowed down to frames per second for you from the ceiling. Someone has dropped almost 30 feet down to the ground, smooth, like an angel and drawn a vibrating katana. 
you had your opportunity to say smooth like a criminal and then to play music but, but they're know. not a criminal <laughs> they're, a, they're, a, they're a legitimate government entity they're like the uh, shinsen gumi yeah, we're here so a government ninja, business like to form me. Uh, you have successfully detected them using your your skill at uh what's it called six cents six cents also right. had high perception anyway i think i rolled a 14 so yeah it was pretty good. It was pretty good enough that you completely detected them. I'm gonna bring some dice over here to the to the yeah, area where uh, we occasionally roll some so dice. So, burst fire says burst fire weapons fired in burst fire mode inflict one point of of additional damage for every point of MOS. Yep. So if you needed a 12 and you rolled a 14, you would get regular damage plus another one because you've you succeed by two. If you've gotten four so over, you would get plus two. So I take the penalty to the without, shot. Just penalty to the shot, but it, the da extra damage wouldn't come into effect unless I had a margin of success. Yes. That well, sounds doesn't not sound it. great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's not what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to use my rifle just straight up shoot him anyway. A rifle, shotgun, or pistol? Uh, rifle, because all the right, rifle yeah, would be the you best snatch your rifle rifles. up off of the command console while you are working on the computers. And let's see here. so I am my small arms is a five, take a minus one, so I'll be rolling at a four. Okay, interesting. I guess I need to get an eight. Well, is let's he, see here. Does it is it should list on the character sheet what you need in order to hit, correct? Uh, is that in combat? Uh, no, it should be in the skills section. It should list what skill number you need to, to hit in order to hit. <clears throat> T recovery. I mean, all of the skills should have this. I have a f five. It's just, well, mm. my, yeah, my skill rank is five. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they give, they give you a skill level and a roll benefit. Yeah, two hit number. Oh, is it not on on the character sheets we're using? No. Interesting. <laughs> That's why I was really confused. I was like, "What?" All right, let me look it up. It used to be eight, I think, was last time. Uh -huh. That's usually uh -huh. like the standard thing. skills, skill checks. And is he point blank? Because that gives me a plus one if he is. Uh, he is point blank. Okay, so that gives me a plus one, so I'd be rolling with a five. <laughs> that is even how it works. I don't uh, know. so the other thing is he moved ten meters this round. So, okay. I know there's a chart that. Uh... Uh, I'm looking at the chart. Yep. Like... Yeah, it's minus one for ten meters. So still four again. Uh, small arms is a seven. So you need to you started a seven, to hit. Uh, and it sounds like your two hit is what, like a five? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, my skill is a five, so. Yep. Then I. And minus one for injury. Okay. And then the two things cancel that. So I need to hit a seven. Yep. Yep. Okay. That sounds. Pretty doable. Doable. Question. Uh, so seven plus four is eleven. Eleven. Okay, you have uh, two margins of success here. So you uh, were shooting assault rifle, not in burst mode. Yes, because okay, that would have been. This an, is this an opposed roll or? Nope. I just it's the two. Melee rolls are opposed. Uh, okay. leaves the damage. Damage is four b four b. Uh, okay, for ballistic, A has a ballistic armor rating of four. So you completely ignore his death sneak suit uh, armor, and you hit him for four. Uh, he needs to make an unconsciousness roll, and he needs to get a seven plus his willpowers. Uh, he gets a plus his willpower to this, but yeah, he got a ten, so he would succeed. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yep, he does not immediately fall unconscious. Uh, <laughs> uh, he takes four points of damage, which is enough to drop his hit points to past a quarter, which means he now takes a minus one on all of his rolls. That's something. Uh, do I have time to quickly radio in saying, hey, nope. there's no, okay. Nope. So what's going to happen now is we're going to roll initiative versus each other. 
Okay. Uh, what do I need to roll? It's a 2d6 roll. I got a 10. That's not great. Yeah. Do well, I get it... the initiative? No. No. It's, You're not here. it's currently just me. Uh, I'll re roll that. Might You're going to well. blow an edge to re roll initiative. I've got two. So. Oh, boy. All right. So I need to be a 10. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about your reflex. What's your reflex score? Uh, reflex is four. Reflex is six. I win. I really tempted to blow that second point of edge. So oh me... boy! <laughs> so early. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a really bad situation I'm in. So, uh, yeah, I'll just burn it so that way I go first again. I'm gonna burn a point of edge to counter that. <laughs> I should have saw that coming. All right. <laughs> All right. So the two of you begin moving in slow motion. I he agree with Beth. Yeah. he doesn't go to stab you with his left hand. He takes like a a pog, and flicks it past you to the command console where you're at. Uh. He goes with a faint slash with his sword, but only the flat of the blade hits your gun, and, like, the two of you are right up next to each other. As he talks, he's wearing a uh, face mask, so all you get is the plastic hot gas that's coming out of the face mask. Uh, so and, like me. and the voice is very buzzy, but you're pretty sure it's a female voice, uh, despite it being, like, technologically garbled. Uh, and, and she says... You have good zension. It's a shame that a warrior like you will die here. Uh, she snaps her fingers, and the thing she threw on the command console shorts out the whole board, and the power goes out everywhere in the building. From that one board? Okay. <laughs> That's a problem. So, uh, Goldstag, Deathwish, Heavy 7. This is what happens to you at the same time. Deathwish and Goldstag, you were hearing the sounds of uh, mech repair, right? Like, even in a factory this big, you're here repairing mechs and salvaging mechs. So the omnipresent sound of shit getting torn apart and then, like, drilled back onto a mech is there. When the power goes out, that's gone. You hear gunshots and screaming. Cool, cool. Heavy 7, uh, you hear the same thing, except the door that's right by you opens up at a 45 degree angle, and then I need you to make a career soldier roll. The door opens at a 45 degree angle. What is my career soldier? Throwing in a flashbang, bro. Watch your ass. Where's that button? So is that person just spend their turn doing all that? Yeah. Their turn oh, okay. was shutting down the power. Well, I feel silly for wasting all the edge, but... Uh, 9 plus 5 is 14. Okay, you succeed by so much. <laughs> Here's what happens, Heavy 7. In slow motion, you turn your head and you watch a grenade hit the like the top edge of the door and then bounce at a 45 degree angle into the room perfectly. I throw my pocket dog at the grenade, knocking it back out the door, and then I slam into the door, shutting it with a grenade on the other side of it. That is going to be incredibly <laughs> tough. Are you sure you want to try this? No, I thought that I thought that's what my successful role let me No, do. your successful role, you didn't even let me get to the successful part. Oh, okay. You've identified the type of grenade. This grenade is almost 30 years old. It's Draconis Combine Surplus from the Third Secession War. Uh, is it a frag grenade or? Yes, it's a fragmentation grenade. Like this grenade predates you essentially is there is there any like a desk or anything in the room that yes I, you that are I know you are sitting in front of the desk you can jump over it and use the desk to block the fragmentation if you okay. would like yeah that's what i'm gonna do all right oh, so you're not going then to that's you like, i feel like all my gear is probably like leaning against the wall behind me so as i roll over the desk <laughs> I, I I bounce into my light machine gun, which then falls in my lap, and I kick the desk over. All right, I want you to make a reflex roll. All right, that's the thing I can do. I'll roll it, and then I'll go check my modifier. Ooh. Five Ooh. plus five is ten. I mean, what's plus the your, what's the modifier your of your, your reflex? Modifier oh. zero if it's five. My, yeah, my modifier is zero. Okay. 
Are you sure you want to keep that roll? I mean, I think I'm going to get hit by a grenade if I don't. I've had to succeed so many times not to get blown up by this grenade. Yeah, that's because when you get flat-footed surprised. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll burn the only point of edge that I have to okay. roll again. So for... you wouldn't have been damaged, but your equipment would have been toast. You wouldn't have been able to grab it before you got over. You take all of your gear with you as you kick the table over. The grenade blows out the windows, and gosh, is it loud in a cramped and closed space with the door closed. It's all right. I don't have good hearing anyway. Uh, as, as this is happening, you hear someone shouting in Japanese something as the door reopens again. But we circle back around to Bandito because it's now his turn. Right. Bandito, you have someone who is in melee combat with you with a vibro sword who just blew out the power system. You can also, despite the adrenaline in your ears and, uh, the sword fight you're currently engaged in, you also can hear gunshots coming from the mech bay. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh... Am I able to shoot this person? Let's yes, in. at point blank range. Would I take negatives? No. Uh, if I'm in, okay. Uh, and since I'm point blank, I get plus one. He didn't move, so I'd be rolling Correct. at a five. Yep. So you just had to hit a seven again. Yep. All right. Uh, well, it's that's too late to say automatic, but that's fine. Thir Thirteen. Yeah, it'd be a 13. Okay. Uh, you aren't using automatic, so you don't have the four uh, margins of success you would need in order to kick over an extra point of damage, but it's fine. You deal another four. Um, I have a minus one to this roll because of the first damage marker, and then I also need to get... No, I'm good. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, so now I have enough damage that I've lost a quarter of my HP twice. So I have a minus two to everything. This is real bad. This is super bad. No, you're still on you're you're not unconscious yet. Yeah, so it's not I know. <laughs> yeah, you keep shooting the Draconis Combine Elite Strike Team person in the chest over and over again. Doof, doof, doof. What the hell are you made of? Uh, we are now going to do Heavy 7 and Bandito's combat simultaneously. Wait, well, you didn't, you said it was a girl, but you didn't roll for hotness. What are you, fucking Kobu or that something? That sounds like something Jesus. from Cyberpunk 2020 that they, you would do. It's <laughs> uh, a random callback. I felt it had to be said. At least. Roll for Dong Slider. I, you know, that I did a roll for hotness <laughs> once in Pendragon, and I felt fucking horrible afterwards, and I've never done it again. All right. Uh, yeah, so, Bandito, Heavy 7. Heavy 7, you've got a problem. That door's swinging open, and three guys wearing, uh, flak armor with the sleeves ripped off. Uh, mm -hmm. both their arms mm -hmm. have huge peacock tattoos, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. down them, and most of them are missing a little finger. Is it on dark? On either hand. It is dark normally, however, they're wearing a shit ton of lights, Sam Fisher style. Like, they're lighting up the room. Okay. I'm just trying to decide if I need to turn on my night vision Wait, goggles or not. It would be a mistake figure. here. Okay. You fuckers are Yakuza. <laughs> Bandito. Uh -huh. Yakuza. It is now dark in the room that you're in. Okay. Is it is it fair to say that I have my, I'm wearing my standard issue, like, armor? Like, is that a thing? That's a thing Do I would say Do you wear your standard in. issue armor when you're sitting around? Uh, okay. I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say yes. I'm going to explain why. No, in you don't have to explain why. I'm just going to use this against you in the future. Yeah, in a deployment situation, you don't ever take it off unless you're asleep. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, okay. Look, I'm not going hard at you. But, uh, this no, is no, like no, a D&D &D if you're like, I wake up and I'm in my heavy armor, and I'm like, that's fine, you're exhausted tomorrow no, morning. If but... anybody out there in the chat is like, that's ridiculous, you wouldn't be wearing it, he would. everyone would absolutely be like, we're behind enemy lines in like a in like a Blackwater -like situation. Like, yeah. Half the people are sleeping in their body armor. Like... All right, so. so we're running two simultaneous combats. At the end of it, I'm going to check in and see what Goldsag and Deathwish are doing. Uh, Team Yakuza. My body is ready. Has I never, a, I never has a seven. Don't worry. Team DST has a nine. Bandita, what do you got? Oh, do I need a roll now? Yes, you do. Uh, eight. Yeah, uh, Bandito is an eight. What do you got there, Heavy Seven? 
He gets a six, so we can get a straight flush. Nine. Wow. Instead, you're going simultaneously with the Dest Agent in the other room. Uh, so... DST and... Spade, you're screaming obscenities how this person just took two rifle bullets to the chest at point blank. All right. <laughs> Bandito, this is an opposed roll. Uh-huh. You can oppose it either with a melee weapons, if you're holding a melee weapon, or martial arts, if you have it. I have martial arts. Okay. We're, we're rolling opposed martial arts. It's not been great, uh, but yeah, well, I'm, I Well, I'm rolling melee weapons, and you're rolling martial arts, and the margin of success is probably going to be considerable, but here we go. Uh, I got a 10 on this roll. Oh, shit. I got a plus three. Wow, my martial arts is better than yours. Well, <laughs> I have plus four, but I have a minus one. So. Oh. So I need to get... Time. You need to get a seven, uh, which is what you got. Uh, yep. Yeah, so she goes in. Ching, ching, ching. She is constantly slashing with this vibra sword, and you're like having to block with your assault rifle, kung fu fighting style, desperately attempting to not break the thing that will protect you from dying. <laughs> As she's going, uh, everything about it is just no strength behind the blade. It's all flinging it around. She knows that if she hits you even once with this thing, you're basically dead given the nature of the weapon. Yeah, yeah, it's a good vibra play, yeah. Uh, and as as the two... She's forcing you to fall back towards the command console, and she's just like, Again, my apologies, but I am the dragon's tears. No matter how many times you attempt to fell me, my job here is to destroy you. Fair enough. I guess we have to come back to McGurk. Uh, quick. yes, McGurk, what are you doing? There are three Yakuza wielding uh, submachine guns. That are flooding into the room. Uh, they're having trouble getting in because they're all bottlenecked right at the doorway. Ah, uh, yes, where the numbers don't count for shit. Hmm. Tall us in 300. Yeah. Spread the LMG. So he just mows them all down, steps out into the hallway. <laughs> How would that work? Can I use like? Could I, you can use suppressive fire. Use, yeah, I was gonna say, can I use suppressive fire to just fill that hex with bullets? I do not know the suppressive fire rules, but the answer to that is yes. Okay, I I'd, look them up. I do that. Cause you have basically a minigun, right? I have a he light machine a gun. I have, I have a, a basically I have a squad automatic weapon. A minigun is in a different level. All right, this is. I would have gone to a side. Look, I would have gone with a bigger gun, but. Um, uh, a lot of them were were rarities that I could not get because of you. Uh, Attacker must fire, trace sweeping. on the line. Each space receives the same number of shots. The attack roll for suppressive fire is made for each target within the affected space, but each so, roll receives a minus six plus the number of shots fired per meter. Okay, so how many bullets do you want to fire? Uh, hundred fifteen. Okay, so uh, you will get a uh, plus nine modifier to that roll. Okay, sounds pretty good. Man, I, I, think, I think that sounds good. <laughs> um, should suppress a fire. Okay. Source of text is considered a complex action that uses a number because of... Because the suppress a fire reflects... So you also have a massive recoil penalty to this shot as well. Okay. My, my light machine gun has a recoil of minus two, but I have a compensator that does, reduces that to a minus one. Okay. Let's so see tell, me, recoil tell me what I have to take on top of that. Recoil. Uh, you take minus the number of, oh, you take minus your recoil to the shot. So just minus one? Uh, so, on one da, 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 da. so it'd be yes, minus one a... to the roll. Plus eight, one. plus the small arms. Would yep. that be support weapon? I don't know. I was looking for that. I, I think it's just below support weapon because it can be wielded by a single person. It's not actually like a crew serve. I guess. Yes, yeah, it's a regular cabin. weapon. Yeah, the auto cannons are like, two crew pairs. Yeah. It's, it's the largest weapon you can carry as a single person, basically. Yep, so you have a plus nine of this roll. Plus nine, plus my modifier. Yep. When, when plus of, eight. Of plus six. Because it's adding his oh, wait. I'm looking Oh, at yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then you take a minus one. Small yep. arms. So you have a 14 to this roll, plus whatever you roll here. 
Wait, let me double check that my small arms is in fact yes plus six. So what you're telling me is you just use a whole bunch of ammo with your suppression fire. Yeah, I mean you use basically yeah. half of his clip or something, right? Uh, oh so no, you got a you got an LMG. Probably I have a, 40 would be half, I have a 45 round magazine. And right, so you used a 30 year magazine. Bullets. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna roll, and this what's so what's my total modifier? You're gonna have to roll three times, one for each target. Uh, okay. Your modifier is a plus 14. Plus 14. Okay. The only way you can fail this is with double ones. So there's a 11. Okay. Four. For Roll first again. Guy. 25. There's a 10 for second guy. Okay. And a 12 for All last right. guy. Uh, oh. Roll another d6. Oh, oh that almost oh, laid down on a six, six again. It's a two. God, that would have been painful. Here's what happens. All three guys rush into the room. The lead guy gets shoulder blocked by the other dude, and you can hear him just like, Nanda Koya! Ute! Ute! All three of them begin spreading out in slow motion. If you've ever played what's called Frozen Cortex, you just like get up and over, <laughs> right? And you're using the table to, to balance your weapon. We switch to overhead, and there's just bullets arcing out of your gun like tracers. <laughs> These guys are just like, goo, 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 goo. one of them just like, ah, oh, turns around to like go back out the door, and then like slams up against the door. We see the door from the other side, just like four bullets come through <laughs> it. Blood is leaking out. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I rise up and I'm doing like I'm holding it. I have like the top handle, you know, hip firing it, and uh, I have like a it's like a cigar coming out of the side of my mouth, but instead of a cigar, it's half of a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> right. Death wish, gold sag. You're hearing an awful lot of shooting, and then from right next door, you he, you just hear like a barrage of a grenade going off, and then an LMG firing at high speed. <laughs> oh, I know who that is. What are the two of you doing? At least Heavy 7 is still alive. So we're in the hospital area. So. <laughs> yep. Um, I pull out both of yep. my guns. Who all is in here with Just us? the two of you right now. Okay. And we're in the hospital area, so we still have lights, I would imagine. Nope. Cause Whole building's lost power. Yeah, no but separate generator? Backup generators. Well, Hasn't kicked in yet. Right eventuality give us a couple seconds so just a reminder this place is a factory like you set up a temporary medical area but this isn't a hospital yeah it's a it's a field medic zone it do, will have a backup generator it just takes a while for those things to bloody kick in is that what you're explaining to death wish with your turd <laughs> No. The two of you are like no. pulling out your weapons, making sure your knives are facing downwardly properly, discussing the <laughs> efficacy of field hospitals. We're obviously I putting on the face paint. I pull off both my guns and turn a light, a light by a torch on my um, auto pistol. This whole uh, thing is way out of code. Is there <laughs> no backup generators? Is there uh, only one door? Or are there multiple doors? Uh, there's only one door out of this particular room. Okay, I'll motion for him, and we'll kind of flank either side of the door. Okay. Because if the power goes out, if someone's coming for us, they'll come in through the door. The yep. All right, make a perception check. Both of us? Just him, because he said he was going for the door, and then he wanted you to flank. All right. The perception, I have a plus one to this. Wow. <laughs> and a six, so I get a seven. Okay. Uh, Did you include your minus one? Minus one for what? Your, your injury. injury. Oh, so that balances out. So I have a six. Okay. All right. Uh, I am going to need you now to make a perception roll, Gold Stag. All right. Let me guess. It's to do with sound. So it is, actually. I get a plus, um, plus one to that armor, and that's a flash. That's so. That's a five. That's. It. I'm gonna spend an edge to re-roll that. No, don't, okay. don't spend an edge. I've got two edge. I've got two edge. I'm gonna just re-roll. Since there's no enemies within the area, he can't spend edge to um, counteract this. Okay. You're like, I'm gonna make a perception roll to see if there's enemies in the area. There's no enemies, so I could just spend all the edge I want. That's a better one. That's a seven. Okay. <clears throat> Hear a lot of gunshots. A lot. Of you gunshots. guys get up to the doorway, and it's just gunshots everywhere. And then they stop. There's no more gunshots. Oh, what about me? It's my turn. It is the beginning of the turn again. We're gonna cut back over to Bandito I'm... versus the Dest. Okay. 
All right, uh, uh, let's roll. Wait, no, I, I rolled last time, so I. Still oh yeah, yeah no, no, you're at the end of the you're at the end of the yeah. initiative order. That's right. Let's do this. What are you gonna do? Straight up, I'm just gonna do automatic fire and do four shots. So you're sure? Yes, because I don't is is the recoil added the recoil modifier added for each shot or just the one? I think it's just the one. Okay, so that's a lot. So it'd be plus four, plus one because point blank, minus one because of recoil. So I did four shots. So if you're rolling a four, you gotta get a seven. Uh so ten. Um let's see here. So it'd be four plus for each bullet for each is it each extra bullet or is it just per bullet? Complicated. It's just combat. once. Just when once? each extra MOS adds plus one damage to represent multiple bullets being fired. Okay, so it'd be So how much three. did you succeed by? Uh ten, so seven, so Three. So one MOS. One. One so MOS. you're going to end up dealing five points of damage. So here's Isn't what happens. Because I fired. No, four it's not per bullet. Oh, okay. Each so normally when you fire a non-burst weapon, you need four margins of success in order to get one extra point of damage to represent being hyper accurate. Okay. Uh, when you are bursting, you get one point of damage for each margin of success to represent extra bullets. Up okay. to the number of shots that you took. Uh, and you fire more than enough shots to, to, to take one extra point of damage. Uh, you fire off a burst. One of the bullets misses, but two of them hit this assassin in the chest. The armor is uh, has got plating in it, but it's clear that the armor was designed to be flexible for use in melee combat. And just shatters. Uh, the... Dest agent looks down at the holes in their chest and then just falls down in shock and dies. Finally! Uh, Damn! I've got, I just want to say, I've got a uh, uh, benefit of a two to my perception, so that seven would have been an eight. That's not going to be enough. Okay, fair enough. I was just so, sure. can I do anything else in my turn? Is that it? This is the end of the round. Okay. Paradin, now that the shooting has stopped, uh, and your adrenaline starts kicking up. You and Goldstag both hear a voice calling you over the radio. They're like, is anyone there? Check in. Check in. I pull out my communicator because I do have a communicator. Herod in here, what's the status? Sir, this is Eagle. Please switch the code names. Who's... I do look we at know Goldstag. anyone called the Eagle? I you, just look at, you have I no idea who this is. Like, just to be clear for the audience, this is the voice of Diego Garcia. Uh, <laughs> is it the is it the Aztec? Yeah, it's the chief Aztec. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I actually do. I put my hand over it. Who's Eagle? I think he's the guy who works on the Baron, maybe. You mean the Baron doesn't? Hello, is Baron? anyone there? Oh, it, no, yeah, yeah, no, yes. Uh, Matter actual reports. Where are you? Are you Understood, safe? sir. I what can't report my location. They have our communications. Fantastic. Sir, there were 20 of us in the mech bay. Ten of them have been captured. The rest of us are scattering. Several are dead. I'm looking at the situation now. It seems like they are going to take them and begin torturing them. They want to get information about who we are and where we're located, but... They're also attaching explosives to all of the mech cockpits. Oh, son of a bitch. Damn it. There's only four of them down here. I think I heard someone off in the command center as well. All right, well, I'm going to circle off the command center. See if you can... Sir, do not tell me your plan. Like I said, communications are compromised. Do I have a radio? Can I, I'm listening into... Uh, do I, you I have a communicator on can, your? Yeah, it's part of my helmet. Everybody. Then has yes, part of the helmet. you right. you can jump in on this now. Okay. Bandito, do you have a communicator? Yeah, uh, I'm part of the helmet. helmet. I probably I have the same helmet, so yeah. Okay, then yes. Do we? Man, this feels real bad. Um, we don't have any combatants really on our staff. 
I mean, the, the tech should all be trained as like shooters. Okay. But you know, I'll I'll say this now, and I I I Can get that you're gonna say no because you've never mentioned this before, and that's mm -hmm. fine. I feel like there would absolutely be some kind of plan, right? Like unless some kind of battle drill, like if we're, if the uh, if the dropship ever comes under assault. But uh, See, I've never mentioned it before, so I'm okay with your saying no. You don't have. A plan. I mean, that's fine about the dropship, but this is a mech bay factory. It's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm if adding we this. Of my if list. you want to tell me what your plan okay. to defend the dropship is at a later date, just in okay. case I ever yeah. attack the dropship, I will. We'll have like rally points and safe houses and stuff. Safe house is the janitor's closet that keeps yes. shoving exactly. Dito into. <laughs> Medical room or anything. Rapier's emotional breakdown room is safe house. Is checkpoint alpha. Um, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, I just get on the comms and I'm like, if you're running around in black pajamas and swords, uh, guns down, asses up, because I'm coming for you. I don't think you've seen the black pajamas and yeah, swords. Yeah, you haven't seen any DSD. What were the guys wearing it's... that came at me? They were wearing uh, he flak. He could just... They were wearing... Flak, okay, yeah. so now that you're like leaning over them and looking down, right, they're I'm wearing... Like, peacocks. Yes. They're... Guns down, asses up. Watch they're wearing 20-year-old surplus for secession war... Uh... Like flak jackets with it, which are the sleeves ripped off so they can show their tats. Okay, yeah. Your, shit, any your, cyber... your shit is old and your game is tired. Fucking any... give up now and I'll let you say goodbye to your mother before I kill you. And any cyber ninjas out there, put the swords down. It's just silly. <laughs> oh my. So after a few seconds of taunting, you hear a yeah. voice come back over. That's what I want. That's what I wanted. Who is this that I'm speaking to? Depends who you're asking for. Like, I'm uh, not entirely certain which one you're referring to here. Who is the leader of this unit? Oh, well, that would be me. I am in control now. If you are saying that our Draconis Elite Strike Team leader is dead, then you can refer to me as the boss. Can, can I check the? <laughs> can I check the guy, the person that I just killed, see if there's like any semblance of like ranking or something on there? Well, I mean, I just, it's uh, Draconis Elite Black. Strike Team. They don't have visible ranking. It's a black That's fair. stealth suit. Yeah. Mister the Boss. That's that's gonna. That's irritating. What is it you want exactly? If you surrender now, you will be tried in a Comstar court rather than execute it as terrorists. And if we don't surrender? We are not the Draconis Combine Mustard Soldiery, as I'm sure you've noted over your radio communications. Our minder is dead. We are the Yakuza, and you have invaded our planet. I don't think I need to tell you the things we'll do to you and your men. We I have ten of them down here right now. I wonder how they'll fail when we begin pulling out toenails. Toenails? For every toenails. one minute that you fail to surrender, we will begin by removing one finger. Hold, please. <laughs> Put my head back over the mic. Your minute starts now. It's like I just look at Doctor. What did you do? So based off based off the quick report that we got from Eagle, um, what is my proximity to any of the locations that he said he had soldiers? Uh, he didn't say he had soldiers anywhere. He specifically I mean, I'm not did. That he had soldiers where there were. Um, they are in the mech bay right now. You have guess. a report that there are four yakuza in the mech bay Dude. who are attaching explosives to your cockpits and taking prisoners. Okay, what am I closest to? Am I closest to the mech bay? Am I closest? You to You are the right next center? door to the medical bay. You are several dozen meters from the command center, and all of those locations are a hundred meters away from the mech bay. Which is all of them are internal inside of a factory. Where? So basically, you're saying equidistance uh, to, to any of the objectives. Where no, because you're you're right next door to Harridan and Goldhirsch, and you right. are a short distance, several seconds worth of running to the command center. Okay, where am I at? I don't waste any time. You're why in the command guy, center. Why this guy? Oh, I'm in the command center. Yes, you were okay. you were attempting to hack the internet. Yeah, yeah. Well, this guy monologues. I quick peek out the hallway. And I rally up with the commander and the. Okay, you. I, yeah, I. Do you. 
Do you have your night vision engaged when you peek into the hallway? If it's dark, yes. Okay. When you do, you can see that there are two Yakuza about to invade the command center. Both of them are wearing night vision gear. Uh, and one of them has a automatic rifle and the other has an automatic shotgun. Are they conveniently stacked up? Uh, they are stacked up. So okay. they are perpendicular to you. So they're, they're like one next to the other. I'm going to suppressive fire that box. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I feel like I'll wait till after this, this murder. Before I do that, I'm going to call, yeah, I'm going to call the bandito, uh, pull up your socks. I need you to. I need you to make an initiative roll fire. versus them. Yeah. Uh, they got a seven. And I'm not going to call him Bandito of the radio. I'm just going to call him Cowboy. <laughs> yeah, got you got him. Like All right, make your roll. How many bullets are you mean? firing? Fifteen again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, dead. Not as good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> still bad. It's rough. You fill the corridor with fire. Uh, there are bullets everywhere. Bandito, the door opens to the command center, and one guy just falls in. His shotgun goes off as he lands on top of it, and his head blows off. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm in the process of reloading. I just see the guy. Okay, I feel like that saves I, me trouble. Right before like that happens, door. I open the door and peek out and look over, see the two Yakuza, and then turn and see. You, and do you and have your night vision engaged? And just bring your head back. Yeah. Do you yeah. have your night vision engaged when you do yeah. that? All right, you are blinded by the flare from the light machine gun going off right next to your face. Well, no, I, I jerk back into the room. Doesn't he have, like, cyber eyes? He He's does. He's doing comedy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just, just going to reload, head out. Uh, they didn't say exactly where they're taking the people. So I mean, after after he mows them down, I just say, we surrender? And yeah, give eyes engaged. <laughs> I start doing a bunch of hand signals. I'm like, rally here, I'm fucking go I feel here. Like I'm, I'm, I hand signaling back. Are there more people in the command center or is it just Bandito? It was just Bandito. It was just me. Okay, all right. Um, Ninja, it was So the voice comes back over the comms and says, very funny. If you're surrendering, lay your weapons down and approach with your hands up to the mech bay. Very yeah. well. I've laid my weapons down. Can you this tell me your name, sir? Down. And then you, you hear someone over the comms just like, this is Baron. <clears throat> I assume you gentlemen would not like to see Baron harmed, right? Um, no, we'd rather avoid that. Uh, you hear a, a anguished scream shortly after that. Well then, I look at the others. And it's already a minute. <laughs> I mean, you literally just murdered a couple of his dudes in the middle of negotiations. So what you're saying is murder him next. Got it. Yes. I just, I just say, well then, and I, sh I shut the comms off and I just look at them and gesture towards the mech. All right. So I'm with all my guys now. We're all together. We're all in the yep. hallway. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I have? Uh, I want to tell everybody to switch to a, a new secure channel. Just, so, just the four of us. Uh, is that a possibility for us? No. No. Yeah, you, there are so. this, these aren't multi-frequency radios in our com combo gear. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, they probably would search look, for it anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. Have long range missiles that only go like a hundred yards. So, so okay. here's the deal. Me we don't have channels. We don't have they channels. they have your radios basically. Yeah, okay. So they're they're monitoring all stations, is that what yep. you're saying? I mean they literally have a Draconis Combine agent here, so Okay, that's cool. Yep. Yeah. Like uh, you switch and, and like there's a red light indicating that you're currently being monitored. Is there that's a way you know. for us to split up to be able to enter yes. them from different points of entry? Yep, it's a factory. That's another TTP we'll sites. have to write is uh, communications. That's fine. I'm just checking all these boxes off of my head. I'm like, this is what we're gonna do differently yeah. uh, from uh, now on. Have separate communications on those four. Have me and why are we splitting up? Aren't they all in the mech bay? Yeah, but it's the but pincer, pincer attack them. Yeah. yeah, me and you just suppress a fire, and then the other two come in sneak. While you guys are discussing this, uh, you hear another burst of gunfire, and someone is just like, No, no, please, I have a fact. Right, we should probably get it, moving. Was it from the mech bay? Uh, no, it's coming from somewhere else nearby like there's a series of rooms between you and the mech bay 
uh, and and you heard some shots from over there. Okay, well, I want to start. I want to get everybody to stack up and start going down the hallway, clearing rooms. So we need to hurry up and get to the mech bay. One thing. Before they do anything. So what's the plan? Are you going to the mech bay first, or are you clearing a path? And room room sweeping first. Otherwise, we're okay. going to wind up. We don't want people. We don't want people coming up behind us. Yeah, right. you many, have to clear as you go. How many seconds is a turn of combat? Uh, five. Uh, I think it's five. it's five. Is it five for personal? Okay. Yep. It's all right. We're going right. to okay. we to start off with. I need you to peel use off your into the first room, and the second two peel off into the second room. I need you to make your special. Awareness roll, Bandito, uh, as you guys begin creeping forward. All right, so plus six. This is before we even see who's the vanguard of the unit. Okay, so it's perception is four, minus one for injury, plus three for uh, since six would be six. So that is 13. Uh, And this is just a perception roll for you? It's with the six cents. Just perception will be 10. Uh, oh, What's does it the, add a bonus to... Is six cents adds plus three. In okay, these ex- excellent. Uh, what's that, so, a seven? So you have three bonuses. All right, so who is actually vanguarding this unit? Who is front man the doors? Everything. I think we all have the same armor, don't we? Basically. About, yeah. I mean, well, Deathwish is wearing a sneak suit, which is a piece of armor. I think I have the same armor as... And uh, it's shitty. It's really shitty. Like, I took yeah. whatever the standard was that like you get yeah. wherever we were, so... Yep. Yeah, I, I got the standard, but I, I bought plus deal boots, so I have extra armor. I, I may couldn't have, may carry the plus regular body armor at that time. That's right, you would... <laughs> yeah. You couldn't carry uh, a rifle. <laughs> uh, I am Hans, um, and I am uh, Franz, uh, and we are here to pump you up. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I, I, I'll go first. I have the most. I have the most negatives as right. I'm also drunk. But I'll go first. I don't care. I'll go I second. Need, I need you to make a perception roll, heavy seven. I'll go between. All right. Oh, do we want to put our most perceptive then? If it's going to be, that's Would fine. Be ideal. Is it? Uh, what do you think the guy in the front's doing? Oh, I mean yeah, the guy I'm in the front fine. just shoots first. I'll go first. up to the front. All right, you go first then. All right. I'll go then we don't need to make another roll then if Bandito's okay. going up in the front. Okay. All right. So here's the situation, Bandito. <clears throat> you have a hundred meters of. Uh, of rooms to clear between here and there. You guys move very quickly, uh, like moving up to a door, opening it very quickly, looking around and continuing to move. Over the comms, you hear two more fingers get chopped off from Baron. Uh, Somewhere down the way, you hear someone else get found by the Yakuza and shot. You finally reach a room where the Yakuza seem to be staging. It looks like the techs set up like a secret keger, the corporate techs that work for the agent of the Yarl. The guys oh. that your your clients text have like secretly set up a keg room uh, in here, and the yakuza are like kicking back and getting a drink real quick. Uh, there are four guys in here. All of them are armed with Shimatsu forty two assault rifles. You can see that they also have the peacock tattoos down both arms. Most of these guys have uh, several digits missing, like left hand missing pinky and ring finger. So he's able to quick peek and get all of this before we rush in? Is that the situation? Yep. What do you guys want to do? Bandito has seen all of this, but they're they're close enough that if you speak out loud, they will definitely hear. Even Whisper? I mean, Whisper, no, but... So it's three guys? I'd probably just sign real quickly to... uh, Was it three or four? To Heavy. It is four. Is it four fingers? uh, Sleeveless? Like a motion, like no sleeves. Okay. Yeah, I hear about that. I just signal for him to start on the left, and I'll start on the right. Okay. Okay. What are and, you guys gonna uh, do? I wanna, I wanna make some, I wanna make some very base level assumptions. You tell me if this is stupid, okay. or tell if my fellow players tell me if your character would not know this, right? Like, room clearing 101. Like you could Google it on the internet level room clearing. Like you all get through the doorway. Like that's task number one, right? Like. Nobody stops in the doorway and shoots. Like no, everybody, you just, you, everybody moves clear. Al- alternating directions. The first person runs in to the path of least resistance. The second person goes whatever the opposite of that person, and so on and so forth. Right? Like you all wishbone in at filling the room with fire as you as you enter, so that within five seconds everyone is in the room. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, um, would your character know that? I guess went, all of us went to some form of military. That's school. true. That's yeah. true. Yes, so we all went to I would assume that we covered under basic yeah. tactics at least. Yes, this is very basic training level room clearing. Okay. 
Yeah, basic. All right. So, uh, is do we like do we need to roll for initiative or do we just do? You guys will have a surprise round. Oh, okay. Cool. So I'll go in first. I'll do uh the suppress a fire thing. Do ten sh- ten shots. Okay. I'm not even gonna make you roll. You just fucking slaughter these guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. over the radio, you hear it click in again. Do you guys answer it? No. We just move on. Just go. All right. No. So, no. let me be clear. Who in this party has night vision right now? I do. I, I do. do. I think we all do, just because Goal we have that one night op. Right. I mean, I'm turning it on or off, like, scenario I'm, dependent, I'm, right? Like, if I come into a room with a bunch of flashlights, I'm obviously going to turn it off first. You get to the final corridor before the mech bay. Uh... There's a, a hallway that surrounds the mech bay in every direction because it's not actually a mech bay, right? It's a factory. And it's the the thing that runs on the second floor that leads to the gantries. You are leading to that hallway and someone has set up a bunch of crates and chairs and tables and has set up a barricade. Uh, Bandito, with your sixth sense, you peek around the corner and before they catch you on the night vision scopes, you see three guys with night vision one of them has some sort of long rifle and the other two have, you know, like rifles without giant scopes on them. Uh, they're ready and waiting for you guys to come around the corner. Um, uh, okay, so I'll just And they back. also, they've got, you know, like when you look at a night vision scope through a night vision scope, you get that weird glinty effect that lets you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. they all have night yeah. vision. What? Um, um, there's none of I, our guys in there. This is just where they're barricaded in. They they are barricading to prevent you from coming to the second floor of the mech bay. You can try I going wave, down to the first floor and see if there's something else there. I, I, wave really to, yeah. I wave to the rest of the guys and point to a light attachment on my auto pistol. There you I go. Take it off. Uh, I motion for. Do we have flash? I think we have flashbangs, don't we? I have grenades. I don't I do have flashbangs. I, have, yeah, I no, want to throw a grenade at these guys. I shot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just. I, I was going to I, just, I do signal three guys. Uh, three guys. Eyes. What I point that? at my night vision goggles. Are they flacked up like the other guys are? It. I mean, they're behind a barrier. There's it's night vision. Tell, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, so I I'm going to make an assumption they're armored like the other guys were. Would I know what type of damage would be best against those guys? Uh, melee damage. So, uh, so I have three different kinds of grenades. I have armor piercing, explosive, and fletch it. Uh, with the armor that they are wearing, what's the damage on the grenades? I don't know how to read that. Uh, give me the oh, tag on one of them. Um, armor piercing is uh, plus two B slash minus one. Explosive is minus one X slash plus one S. And fletch it is minus I have no three idea what B. This is. Plus one S. Yeah, I don't know what this is, man. That that is not a correct damage code, so I don't know what's okay. going on here. Do you know what on. page that's on? Uh, Standard explosives is on PDF page two seventy eight. Excellent. Okay. Um. For me, anyway, I don't know if it's any different. <laughs> Grenade micro. Uh. So that's range. So I have a regular grenade. Yep. And I have uh A B C D E? The Let's hell is that? It doesn't even list the damage. It just has like an A. Standard explosives. Mines grenade rules. The range a grenade can be thrown is equal to the character strength score. Uh, what is the strength score of Good Man Heavy 7? His strength is a 5, his modifier is not. Okay, so you cannot throw a grenade far enough to reach this. Oh, okay. They're 20 meters away, and you can throw 15. Wow. What's the grenade's grenade's explosive radius? Um, Won't matter. If I can't throw it over their barrier, they won't be affected. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Well, I think Plan B. You I don't know what like Plan B was. is. There, there was no like other way to around this barricade, was there? That's that's to get into the mech bay. Yes. Uh, you could try going either down a floor or up onto the roof. That'd be wasting time. Uh. 
I can use my light to blind them if that's a thing. And you can attempt that. it, yeah. You want to hand it to me? And I can do it since. What's the test? I'm probably on that edge. No, I said I took it off my gun. Oh. Yeah, because if I've got. I think I can do blind fire. You want to blind fire into a barricade? Because if you. It's mostly just to fire at them, wave the flashlight, hoping to hit them. Let me ask you this. So, so we're at like a we're, we're at like a turn in the hallway. Yes. Yes. Is it a T or an L? T. Okay. And are there any other rooms that come out between where we are and yes. where they are? It's a series of office rooms along the way. Okay. So can we track through rooms to get closer to them and pop out closer? What do you mean track through rooms? Uh, so, like, from a top down, if around the left-hand corner, 20 meters down, there's a barricade with soldiers behind it. Yep. Directly to my left, on the other side of this wall, are there rooms that empty out into this hallway? Yes. Behind them? Either behind or closer to them. Uh, closer, yes. Behind, no. So, do I have access to those rooms no. other than those doorways? They are all in the doorways up and down that. Yeah. There's what no, are they, like, there only a one entry. What are these walls entry. made out of? Uh, it is a factory used to create battle mech stuff. Concrete. So it's all made out of is reinforced like battle walls. No, it's made out of reinforced battle mech armor. The walls are made out of armor. Yep. I mean, if something explodes here, you could conceivably take out a chunk of the planet. You'd think that would. Oh, wow, really? Okay. You. I, I know we mock long range missiles, right? But <laughs> technically, these long battle mech armor is supposed to be the hardest substance possibly made chemically, right? Okay. Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. super dense aligned crystal steel. And in order to make explosives that can puncture that, the explosives have to be super massive and very efficient. Re real life, I'd be going through these walls in a heartbeat. I mean, in real life, they they don't make walls out of tank armor, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, I think it's essentially like every room is a panic room in this facility. I think uh, it's essentially a, a try to signal like maybe just trying to blind fire, not blind fire. I think this is no good. Fire. I think we have to reroute. I think we how, need to. How long I think we need to book it to another entrance. Uh, less than four minutes. What's the roof access look like? Uh, roof access will require going back. It'll cost you about half a minute. Uh, I don't have any of you been up to the roof. I would think so. Scout, then you know where it is on the like maps that are hung up around the factory, but no one's actually been there. I mean, I is... played golf up there. Does that count? Really? <laughs> Did the you... roof access back into the mech bay. No. Roof access back into the mech bay. There's a skylight in the mech bay. Sick. I think <laughs> let's go there. I think we should go. This feels down. like a bad idea. Okay. Uh, really? Elevated um, position of fire? I'm loving with, this. With like full cover? I mean, it's the matter of can they hear us from up there? All right, Rad. So I wow. found the I found the grenade types. Um, okay. I think a I regular grenade is a class B. So it's three X type and then ten A damage, uh, which is pretty pretty damaging. That's enough to kill a regular person easily. I'd hope so. <laughs> Uh, 10A would have been enough to heavily damage the Dest agent without killing them, but it would probably kill all of you pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so I guess... I mean, you're worried about them hearing us, but Arthur just said that the entire facility is basically crystalline steel. Footsteps... The sound of footsteps doesn't really traverse through that very well. Like, at all. It wouldn't echo? No. I mean, I've I mean, been, on, sounds, I've been on the roof hard. of... I've been on the roof of many schools, and they're not made out of uh, anything relatively, and you definitely can't hear people walking around up there. Yeah, it's a fortified building. You're basically yeah. walking around on top of a concrete bunker. Nobody inside You're is really going to hear you. Like an inches thick steel, you know. There's not yeah. going to be sound transfer there. If you've ever right. walked on the uh, the deck of like an aircraft carrier, like there's no sound anywhere going anywhere. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I All guess right, I'll. Then. Well, I guess I'll maintain leading the group to that direction. Alright, so here's what happens, Bandito. You go to open the door, and as you're, like, going out the door onto the roof, you hear a clicking noise of someone putting a hammer back to a revolver that's pressed up against your ear. Oh, uh... Can I back out real quick and just shoot the door? <laughs> you're just... <laughs> 
gosh, you always do this. You're like, it's oh shit. <laughs> I was like, okay. Before you make this decision, we're at break time. Would you like to go okay. on break before you rethink this? I'll rethink this. Excellent. And uh, we all die. We'll be back in about seven minutes for the second half of uh, Can the Crew Get to Their Battle Mechs Alive While the Battle Mechs Are Still Intact Without Everyone Dying. We'll Maybe see if that goner. happens. I'm just going to throw a grenade at him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this Worms Armageddon style. You, you know that someone's going after him, so you're going to take him down with that guy. I'm just like dibs on the Devastator and then I shut the door after throwing the grenade. All right. Look, we'll be back soon. Stick around. Enjoy the break music. <laughs> 